Hey, yo, Attila, bring the pitchfork. It's time to play as Hungry, okay? That's right, boys. We're playing as this amazing nation smack in the middle of uh, Europe over here. The Hungarians, known for their great appetites, have played a significant part in medieval history, especially European medieval history, because, you know, they, they existed in Europe in the Middle Ages. I don't know where I'm going with that. But the point is that Hungary is an insanely fun nation to be playing as an EU4 1.35, and it has both an amazing mission tree that gives it personal unions on Bohemia, Austria, Poland, and every single one of you bastards that has not yet subscribed to the channel. So hey, if you don't want to be a junior member of Hungary, maybe you should hit that subscribe button. Like the Romanian police used to hit me as a kid in uh, the 90s, but that's a story for another time. Also, if we get 5,000 likes in the first few days after this is out, I'm gonna do a new campaign as Austria with the newest update since they finally managed to fix the uh, bugs that Austria had at the launch of uh, Domination. Now now it's okay so we, we should be able to play with them now now the hungarians aside from the mission tree have a lot of unique flavor they do start however with an interregnum and the reason for that is as you expected the crusade against the ottomans the battle of varna the leadership of hungary passed away that's right vladislav the guy who was in charge of poland was also in charge of uh, hungary it's a little bit more deep than that though to be fair hungary was in fact in a a little bit of turmoil even before the Battle of Varna because in 1439 Albert the King of uh, Hungary and Austria passed away and despite the fact that the he did have a son Ladislaw which was born after he passed away that's why in our game Ladislaw Postumus this guy over here that's the heir of uh, Austria is called Postumus which is Latin for born after the passing of of the passing of Albert. That's what this is all about, right? But what happened in, in uh, 1439, after Albert passed away, even though Ladislaw was the rightful heir, the nobility of Hungary decided that they want somebody with a little bit more authority, not an actual infant. So they decided to give the crown to Vladislav, the king of uh, Poland. That ended up with Hungary being in a civil war for a little bit of time. However, the civil war ended once uh, Vladislav assigned Janos Hunyadi, the famous white knight, as his leader in the civil war and he basically won the crown of Hungary for him, making uh, Janos Hunyadi also a great general, a renowned general in the process, and uh, he was assigned in charge of defenses against uh, the Ottomans and uh, prior to that one of the reasons why the crusade was even called against the Ottomans is because uh, Janos Hunyadi managed to make his way to Sofia with the Hungarian army in the various battles that they had against the Ottomans prior to 1444 but that being said after 1444 with the passing of Vladislav historically speaking Vladislav Postumus was supposed to be the the heir however Janos Huniadi took over as regent of Hungary and eventually his son Matthias Corvinus became the king of Hungary. After Matthias Corvinus passed away in 1490 the nobility put on the throne a weakling that they could take a lot of power from, and that ended up eventually in 1526 with the Battle of Mohawks which you guys probably guessed it signaled the end of the Hungarian kingdom just a few years afterwards Hungary was split between the Austrians and the Ottomans and that was the end of Hungary until I guess you could say the um, Austro-Hungarian Empire which was a compromise that the Austrians had later down the line or you could also say until the collapse of Austria-Hungary when the actual Hungarian state uh, came to be um, at the end of the First World War. Debatable. Now enough of history, let's actually start our campaign over here because I feel like I've talked a little bit too much. Standard Stettenstein boys. Take note we do start with 35% crownlands as the Hungarian, so that means that after we do this, we're gonna start with 10% crownlands, so it's pretty significant when you think about it. Oh, there you go, we even managed to get a claim on Serbia. Sadly, it's useless. We get claims on Serbia, we get claims on the entirety of the uh, Valachian and Moldovan land, and we get permanent claims on uh, the uh, entirety of Bulgaria. However, because of the fact that we have an interregnum, until we get leadership on our throne, which is gonna take a while, it's irrelevant how 
having these claims. We cannot attack early on. And as such, we are at the mercy of the Ottomans. If the Ottomans decide to take over Serbia, then it is what it is. If they don't, that's good for us. Take note, the Ottomans also have a truce with them until 49 and with the Valachians. So there is a chance that uh, we would be able to get these lands before the Ottomans do. Let's see. It's always RNG. Keep that in mind, boys. We also will try to gun for the uh, march over Moldova with enough alt if 4s We should be able to do it. Let's see if I'm willing to, of course. I'm not sure if I'll have the mood for it. Let's go ahead and get our rivals as well here. We're going to go for the Poles. We're going to go for the Ottomans. We're going to go for the Boch because uh, we want to enforce that union over Bohemia whenever we can. Hopefully they go with Hussai. That would be the best outcome. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to get that uh, alliance with the Austrians for the time being. And I'm going to try and get some more alliances around here. Let's see who would be a good option for me. Uh, Aragon is always good, but Aragon might fall in a union under the Castilian, so it might be a temporary alliance. Alternatively, also some of the HRE miners like uh, Brandenburg and Saxony are also good, especially in uh, wars against uh, the Bohemians. The great part about Hungary is that we also start with the gold mine in uh, the Slovak province of Hunt, and we also have uh, Kosovo at our doorsteps for the taking of course if the Ottomans don't get there before us so let's just play it out a little bit because the initial phase of the campaign is uh well not much uh, warfare so we're just going to be chilling around here we're going to go up to maximum land force limit for now because we don't have any army professionalism i'm going to do that via mercenaries so we will be recruiting over the uh, free company going to get the burger loans to get the free company so now the diet of 1445 has just triggered and take Take note, this is extremely hard for Hungarians to swallow because diets in general have never been a good thing for Hungarians. However, this one was in fact a pretty decent one. So we're going to be electing Janos Huniadi as regent. That means that we're going to get this 455 Chad Lord over here and we're still getting Ladislaw Postumus as our heir. But in 1455, that's going to change because we're going to get another event to put Matthias Corvinus in charge. Okay, so until that point, we can now actually attack nations and we're gonna start with uh, these bad boys here. So I'm gonna do this mission because we have full land force limit here and we got the old alliances. This mission here after Matthias Corvinus happens is gonna give me the claims on Lusatia and all of the Silesian bits. I'm gonna get a claim on them in the meanwhile after my war with the Bosnian starts and let's also start on the 1st of uh, May. Now, I am going to make uh, the Serbs the the main war target and I'm going to use the mercenaries to primary siege down the forts. Yano Sunyad is a chat lord of a general. I don't really want to use him for sieging down. I want to use him to chase out and uh, wipe out everybody around here. So let's actually do that. We're going to carpet siege with the rest of the 9,000 over here and we're going to try and cut off the Serbians and the Bosnians before they merge with each other. Oh, looks like I'm not going to be able to do that. Well, in that case, let's just attack with the full force that we have into uh, Bosnia. As long as we get the three provinces, Nish, Branicevo, and uh, Kosovo, before 1449, we're okay because we were lucky and we got the uh, diet triggering pretty early on. That was super, super good for us. Now, why would you do that, Croatia? Go over there and get yourself stack wiped. Why don't you just attack? Oh, I, could, I, I forgot to click allow attach. Never mind. It's totally Croatia's fault. It's not my fault, okay? Darn, Croatians not listening to me and stuff. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, move around here. We're going to have to have our troopers ready at a moment's notice to push into any province required so we can wreak havoc on the Zibalkons. I might actually vassalize the Bosnians for, uh, so I get less aggressive expansion and I can use their cores over on uh, Herzegovina to get less aggressive expansion. This would allow me to get the entirety of Silesia also without a massive coalition because once I get the entirety of Silesia, I can get the restoration of Union on both Bohemia afterwards, so the second war against Bohemia is going to be the juicy one. Italian engineer, you yes, say. Sure, if the man wants to work for us, why not? Oh, snaps, that's not a... Oh, boy, that's... that's Okay, that's not good. That is really not good. Oh, boy. Yep, I made Ein Mistakenstein. Yep, 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 yep. 
Did not pay attention. 1550. Oh, come on. Really? Bruh. If only I had a general in this army, it wouldn't be issue then. That army's gonna get its ass stack wiped, of course. But this one's not, because I just uh, did the old trickiest Maximus of actually using my brain this time. <laughs> of course, not so much when it comes to getting the minus two terrain debuff in the mountain province, is it though? Okay, this this didn't play as well as I imagined it would, but still, we, we stack wiped their army. That's something for us, right? Even though we did lose 1,000 of our uh, cavalry units if I'm not mistaken but hey we stack wiped the Serbia's army too as well so the war is basically over it's just a matter of carpet sieging the rest now one reason why I said I'm gonna vassalize uh, Bohemia sorry Bosnia is also because Bosnia is Catholic so remember when it comes to aggressive expansion what matters is the religion of the country you're attacking the culture group the location the continent and so on so if they're a part of the HRE so in my case here nobody cares about the uh, Bohemia from a cultural perspective perspective because nations within their culture group are gonna be mine in a few moments all of them but religion wise Bosnia being Catholic the Catholic predominant Europe cares about that they don't care about um, Serbia as much so we're gonna fully annex the Serbians however because they're orthodox comebacks heretics oh no the Ottomans declared the war in the Byzantines feels bad man if possible you should always try and get the Byzantines uh, as your vassals so you can feed them all of the cores in the Balkans and weaken the Ottomans in the process but of course if possible that's a big if we're still gonna go for a war against the Ottomans in the early part of the campaign though so we can weaken them as much as we can and push them out of the uh, Balkan bits. Now we just gotta wait for the other fortification to fall and just as I said it, it felt beautiful. Okay, uh, let's bring these boys over here here in that case and let's do our peace deals now why is Ludi still getting a spy network with Bosnia since they're gonna become their vassals that is because the spy network is gonna lower the a impact with Bosnia and because they're gonna be my vassals uh, having lower a impact is actually not such a bad thing in my opinion there you go cancel that as well so we get extra prestige and we're gonna be doing this also afterwards it seems like the all right they guaranteed the Valachians okay I guess in that case we're not gonna um, cobaladrate the Valachians Kind of want to cobaladrate them though, so got to think about this for a second. All right, let's go ahead and do this also. I'm going to cancel the course simply because I want to. I'm not getting anything from it, but I still want to. I enjoy canceling cores in this game. It's one of the few pleasures I got in life. We're also going to give out the strong duchies privilege now to get the lowered liberty desire for subject and the plus two diplo relation slots. It is possible now with uh, a, a PU and a vassal to give it out before domination patch. You had to have have two vassals now that's not the case anymore hey yo moldova is seeking hungarian support boys we're gonna make moldova a march and now i know what you're thinking my man how many times did ludi alt f4 to get moldova as his march well guys guys a wizard never tells his secrets okay maybe this was my first attempt maybe i alt f4 23 and a half times who's to say nobody knows hey leave in the comments how many times do you think I alt f forward or if I alt f forward considering the chances probably like 5% that I'm gonna get that shit on the first try. Now at least we can do the mission control of Moldova which is gonna give us the permanent claims on uh, the Polish lands. After we get these lands we're gonna get the PU on Poland which just got the PU on Lithuania. So we're gonna have literally half of Europe if we play this uh, right within the first few years and with very little to no aggressive expansion really. Hey I became a great power because of Moldova. Awesome. Speaking of Moldova his Historically speaking, again, I feel like I'm historically speaking too much in this video, so let me know if that's annoying, guys, by the way. I don't want to overdo it. Moldova nation started as a march of Hungary. It was established as a means of defense against the hordes that were invading Europe by the Hungarians. They basically took some of the uh, minor nobility, Romanian minor nobility, from the northern bits of Transylvania, and they armed them up. They gave their Romanian knights and Romanian Romanian uh, soldiers, the weapons necessary to conquer the areas around the Moldau River, which were populated by Romanian speaking people. So it was easier for them to just subdue the smaller little city states, I guess you could say. I, 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 tribal states, you could say, I guess. I don't know. They were not necessarily well known in history because they were just small and insignificant. But yeah, that's why uh, in this particular case, uh, they have the option to become a march of Hungary again or to um, become one of Poland or to just be
be independent. Historically speaking, what actually happened is um, they had a little bit of a feuding period, but Stefan the Great, the ruler of Moldova, came to power eventually. So technically, Moldova was on paper a march of both Hungary and Poland and paid both of them tribute. Alternatively, sometimes skipped some of the tributes. Sometimes he was a little bit mischievous, but the reality is that he didn't really care about either nations and he wasn't an actual vassal. Most of his uh, rule revolved around uh, re-establishing Moldova as a powerhouse in the area. He rebuilt a lot of the fortifications. He established new fortifications. He defeated the Ottomans at the Battle of Vaslui, one of the most painful battles the Ottomans ever had. Crushed the Ottoman armies at Slui. He did a lot of amazing legislation such as the one in which he wanted every single household in Moldova to carry a weapon so that whenever the nation goes to war, the peasants come ready and armed to defend their country. And this also brings me to the point that, you know, it's a lot harder for an established uh, rulership to control a population which is armed. But this wasn't necessarily the case in Stefan's times. The fact that the peasants were armed was a good thing. It helped them out and they were on the side of Stefan because he lowered the taxes. He was on the side of the people. He tried to make the lives of regular Moldovans a little bit better as much as he could. Sadly, after his passing, the entire country went into gradual descent and became a part of the Ottoman tributary system for a very long time. Most of the leadership post 1600s was um, who would bid f the highest at the Ottoman uh, port would become the leader of Moldova and Valachia for that matter, which we call in Romania the uh, Fanariot period because most of the times it would be uh, rich Greek people from the neighborhood of uh, Constantinople, the Fanar neighborhood of Constantinople. That's why Fanariot period for us because most of the leaders came from Fanar. Oh, actually we managed to finish everything quick. It's 1447. We got to wait until 1449 nine to get the um the the war with uh, the bohemians started so maybe i can do a quick war against uh, herzegovina in the meanwhile and i can um get those cores back for bosnia maybe i can get one province also from the valachians after the ottomans eat valachia which i assume will happen at some point in the nearby future i can release them from that one province and feed back all the cores later down the line in the next wars against the ottomans and I'm gonna do exactly just that, boys. Let's Gucci. Let's Gucci quickly. Skippity boo, skippity bay. I come to eat your hay. Because hay was really important back in the day. Hey, it rhymed. I oh my god, I'm literally a medieval rapper right now. Who just got his ass kicked by not paying attention? Okay, never mind. I'm not a good medieval rapper, clearly. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's focus on uh, wiping the uh, Valachians. I'm gonna give the Moldovans an objective so they can siege down Giurgiu whilst I'm uh, sieging down the capital, I guess. This is fairly standard also, by the way. Uh, Valachians always push for the fortification in Basarabia whenever they're at war with Moldova. I don't know if you guys have seen my Moldova run. It's from a couple of patches ago, but it's still the same strat in 1.35. I, uh, I basically get all of the Balkans before the end of the 1400s and I get uh, impaled the Ottoman Sultan, so that's pretty fun as the Moldova. And yeah, in that strat, I, I show off how um, how these guys always rush for the fort, so you can easily stack wipe them as the Moldovans if you attack them while they're sieging this down. I'll link that video in the description if you uh, check the description out. Alright boys, it's a veckler time, yes, for the PCS. Yes. Don't need that, and we can take one less ducat. There you go, boys. Only one province, like I said, is more than enough for now. When it comes to these boyos, however, we're gonna be going for the full annexation only 1.7 aggressive expansion literally nobody gives a schnapps except Valachia apparently but nobody cares about their opinion do they oh looks like we are the first ones to get military tech for there's probably other techs already taken by some of the countries I'm guessing or are we the first ones to use up our mana points I guess we are boys hell yeah we're getting ready for this war November is when it's at and I'm not coring that one province I just took from the Valachians for obvious reasons that being said though I am going to make full course out of all of these Serbian lands and I just got a champion of the joust okay please be a Chad Lord five siege minimum bro come on really this this dude's not even a 25 army tradition general what 
Okay, the truce is over with the Ottomans, the Poles, the Bohemians, and yo ma- um, No, no, that's it. That's that's the only nations that we have the truce over with. I also uh, forgot to bring this guy back, so let's bring him back now. And uh, I shall behave. I promise I shall behave. All right, now, Austria is still not joining in here, which is beautiful. And we shall be calling in the Saxons. Bro, why are you not joining Brandenburg? Usually you hate Bohemia's guts. This one time, you decided you want to be best homies with them, huh? Well, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. Rush B, rush B. And by B, I mean... Wait, what? I'm able to call Aragon now? Okay. Can I call Brandenburg now? Obviously, stretching it a little bit. But yeah, definitely uh, it's going to be of help getting Aragon, who's likely not even going to show up in my lands <laughs> in this war. Obviously, the smart thing here would be to piece out Switzerland, three leagues, and Württemberg first. And uh, I will try to do that, but I also want to get a foothold over in the Bohemian lands. Uh, wait, Telly is in this as well. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should... Um, I should def yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back my troops from here. Let's go over to Telia three leagues. And the Bohemians are gonna attack me. That's A-OK. -okay. I'll let them attack me. Wait, why are they converting this? Oh, it's so sight. Uh I'm gonna let them attack me and I will play this a little bit defensive until I piece out their allies. So it's easier for me to get the provinces that I want from them. It's gonna be a little bit of a longer war, but that's fine. It's enough time for me to get my AE down anyway. Look at this. By getting Bohemia, we get a coalition of quite a few nations now. But by the time that I finish the war, that's going to be reduced to basically half of those nations, which is actually okay since it means that it's not really going to trigger. As always, the AI is going to focus on the weakest member of your alliance set. So that means in my case that uh, that's the Saxons, but it's only temporary. After they got enough provinces and they peace out the Saxons, they're going to come for me. So I need to make sure that I peace out their allies before they peace out my ally. Oh, come on. Really? I cannot get there? What if I get military access through Augsburg? Is that gonna be enough? Come on. Oh, really? What What am I getting blocked by here? Is it this fortification then? I guess it is. Wow. If I go through the south. Yeah, let's try and go through the south into Switzerland. We managed to get military access through the uh, Venetians and we're gonna rush over to uh, Waldstadt, Elans. Maybe that way I can even piece out the, the three leagues without having to siege down their entire fortification. Don't you just love it when small and significant nations like Italia, ally Bohemia, Poland, the United States, you know, basically all the big boys are allies of Atelier in this freaking game. Always, man. They never get small allies. They go for the big boys. Also, uh, what the F is Dulkadir's army doing in Hum? Oh, 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 I get it, guys. This is where Hummus comes from. It's from the old Dulkadir units that came to Hum and gave us some, some us. And then it became Hummus. Imagine if this fortification actually fell at 7%. That would be the greatest day spent spoken of in the history of Hungarly. Come on, 35%. No, no, no 35% for me. Second 35%. No, fuck you, Chur. I see why they call you Chur. It's because you're a cur. <laughs> Just like Miranda Kerr. Yeah, please fall the fifth freaking time. I beg of you. Please fall. Please fall, Chur. Come on, do it. C At least go up to 42%, man. Come on. I mean, I'm piecing out the freaking Swiss before I'm piecing out the three leagues. It's that bad, boys. <laughs> Actually. Wait, what? The three leagues is their vassal, isn't it? It's Switzerland's vassal. I was so close to getting that fort. I wasted like 500 freaking days or some shit on this fortification. And then I basically white piece the Swiss. Oh boy. I am... I am really angry right now. Hey, we got the last jousting tournament, boys. Just in a freaking time, yo. Please win this freaking battle also. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I needed that. I really needed that. <laughs> hey, we got Janos Pannonius, which offers us 50 support for Renaissance in Pest. Uh, Matthias Corvinus established the library over in uh, Budapest or Pest or whatever. Biblioteca Corviniana was established by Matthias Corvinus, and it is known as the second biggest library in medieval Europe during the times of uh, Matthias Corvinus. Quite fitting that it gives idea cost reduction and institution spread as uh, Hungary was the only place in uh, Eastern Europe. I guess you could say Central Europe really, but I'm gonna say the only place in the Balkans after the collapse of the Byzantines that experienced uh, full-on renaissance during the times of Matthias Corvinus. Because his wife was from Naples, forgot her name but I know 
shows from Naples. Uh, he actually commissioned architects from Italy to rebuild some of his fortifications and some of his palaces and such. Guess what I'm saying is that uh, my boy over there, he, uh, he really did enjoy that um, Italian bussy, you know what I'm saying? And it happened, 1451, the death of Matthias Corvinus, sorry, the death of Ladislaw Posumus. So we got Matthias Corvinus 456 with an average claim of 50. Hold on a second, isn't this actually supposed to happen in 55? I might be wrong. Maybe it's I think there is maybe because the heir died. Oh, that's why the actual Ladislaw uh, Postumus died for the Austrians. So that triggered the event for me. Makes sense. Okay. Otherwise, if they if the heir didn't die, I would have gotten the event in 55, which asked me whether I want to put Matthias Corvinus on the throne or not. All right, now we got the permanent claims on the entirety here of um Silesia, Lusatia, and Moravia. And next, once we have these lands or five provinces out of these lands we can get the pu on the uh, bohemians surprisingly aragon actually made its way over here and is helping us out now winning that's a different matter they actually they are no they're gonna get reinforced there yep they lost hey, at least they inflicted some damage on the bohemians right that's what it's really all about it's about the damage we made along the way <laughs> so if i want to be a cheese bowl i could take these five provinces that would be significantly less aggressive expansion or even less than that if i take say this like this this would be, what, 44 aggressive expansion. Basically nothing, right? I could even go for this, really. But the problem is, if I do go for this particular peace deal, what's going to happen is the Poles are going to take the rest of these lands after they're going to sneakily attack the Bohemians, which I totally, totally see coming. That's why I'm going to take the Silesian bits, so that I prevent, essentially, the Poles from uh, sneaking their way into the uh, Bohemian lands. We're almost about finished with uh, looting this province, so I'm going to move my troops over here to loot the next province i mean since we are at war we might as well take all of their money too right oh snaps they got domineering attitude so that's because um ladislaw postumus died and they got the pu restoration on me and that means that uh, they want to enforce that pu restoration which means that they will try to declare war on me okay that is no bueno we gotta get ready for that so we gotta finish this war quick unsurprisingly the uh, saxons gave up it was to be expected. Their entire country was essentially sieged out. I was surprised they lasted for as long as they did. Skibi doom, skibi dooby dee boom, skibi day, skibi doop. Oh, actually, no, come back this way. I'll be honest with you guys. Every time I play in the Bohemian areas, I um, I think of Kingdom Come Deliverance. <laughs> Even when I'm sieging down Bohemian lands, I think of that game. That's honestly one of the best games out there. And if you haven't played it yet, you've been living in a, in a well, you play E4, you obviously been living in a basement. What am I even talking about here? I haven't actually set a light goal for a second part for this campaign, but uh, this is this is shaping up to be really, really fun. So if you guys want a second part, we're not done yet, but if you want to see a second part saying it out loud now, let's get 7,000 likes in the first few days. So I know you really want to see me play this and kick some probably, I don't know, Ottoman ass or something. Hey, what? I can do the peace deal? 139, 138, and literally nobody in a coalition. Oh my lord, let's do it. Let's freaking do it. Oh no, my god. Oh, 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 oh. I almost unconditionally surrendered to the enemy. Oh my god. <laughs> Whew. That, uh, that, that could have been really bad, boys. That could have been really bad. Okay, so, um, really not bad coalition-wise also. Now, I could have taken more provinces, to be fair. I could have probably taken even this area if I wanted to but that would have been a little bit too much in my opinion let's just try to not be on Austria's complete bad side for now you know what I'm saying because they will start asking for unlawful territory now so that means that we will get an enemy in Austria all right I'm gonna consolidate this because I don't have that many admin points and I'm gonna core it up of the works I'm not gonna click this just yet we need to wait until we finish the truce with the Bohemians and then we can attack them with the PU restoration still not joining because they're still rival to Austria but that can change so let's see we also want to attack the uh poles right because we want to get this bit here so we can actually uh get the union and force on them afterwards so that's going to be our priority for now i'm also going to uh pay off my old loans because my old loans are 90 ducats and i can take 140 ducat loans now when i need to which i don't need to just yet i will however build a fortification in Leignitz with the money that i have left because this is a highland and it basically protects the entirety of silesia and the bohemian parts 
cards after I uh, take them, of course. And as expected, Austria's like, yo, give me the territory. No, go away. We got a truce anyway, Austria, so you cannot do nothing to me. And then watch them truce break to get that bad. No, it's not going to happen. No, no, please don't attack. This is actually shaping up to be quite a little bit of a video. I think because of the history talks, I've, I've had way too many of them. And I don't want to make this too long, so I'm going to cut it off here. You know what you need to do if you want to see the second part for this and you want to see the Austria video. And hey, until the next time, check out this awesome Brandenburger run.